you know, I, I've done a number of these large scale distributed online education programs and, and have worked to learn how you build community and closeness across distances. And um, my, my biggest pet peeve is that when technology developers develop their technologies, a lot of times they're designed for use in business. And then there's sort of this after sell to the education space. We're seldom at the table during the development. And so as a result, these technologies are half right when it comes to education, typically. Um, I'm an ethnographer. And so uh, I was uh, tracing along with one of the groups of students across uh, the whole time, the work the Lemelson MIT program does with teams of kids across the US. Uh, as an ethnographer, I'm, I'm conscious that uh, it would also be helpful if there was a research colleague physically present at the other sites Mm -hmm. as opposed to just in the virtual spaces. And for, for our programs that aren't digital, it makes it even harder to research because we can't be collecting all the information um, when, it's, when it's more of a face-to-face -face and, and not online program. And so again, this global research partnership that um, you're launching would be hugely helpful uh, to have, and I could see many opportunities for assessing some of these new models of teaching and learning. That's great. <laughs> well, I, I just think so many of the decisions in education with respect to technology are being made because of a trend or somebody said something without really looking deeply with a research base on what the t what's the right tool for the job? Yeah. What does that tool let you do or not? And I see that over and over again. Um, it, it, you know, my work here at the Lemelson MIT program to this, this point in time pre-COVID had not involved doing online teaching and learning again. So I'm, I'm so pleased to be back in this space. Um, and I, I think it's going to be very good for our program as well. There's, there is a need for not only the research, but educating uh, education leaders and policy yes. makers um, definitely is a need. And I, um, when, when, when I was doing this work with Scenic that I told you about, Scenic is the nonprofit that, that stewarded the, the community um, network tools. Um, we, we formed a group that had representation from each segment and once the horse is out of the barn, right, they've adopted something, we weren't able, even if it would make a lot of sense financially to do some joint licensing, we weren't able to get it off the ground because, wow. you know, people get so wedded to whatever they've chosen. Mm. So in your view, what do you think are some of the sort of new building on the back of that um, awesome work from Biogen and your, your internship? program. What are going to be the sort of exciting new future models of digital education? Which yeah, well, um, I love reading those books that, that give those ideas about where things are going to go. And um, what I've learned over the years is um, it takes a lot longer for education to change and educators to change their practice than, than what we might think. The technologies evolve much more quickly than we do. Um, so I'll answer your question um, with uh, what do I think could be a good next step uh, that we might get to in 10 years uh, versus what do I think is really futurist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want the futurist answer because that's where my brain sits. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, I, I've, I've seen some of these VR, AR embodiments uh, that I find uh, really cool. Like one I was seeing the other day where you're in this virtual hall, like your university, uh, yeah. and there were like, you were in a poster session and as you got nearer to each poster, you were hearing the talk 
of that presenter. So just like um, yeah. a, a real virtual suit. I, that's pretty cool. Like I yeah. never have to get in an airplane and I can go in and out of all the different mm. uh, presentation rooms. That would be very nice. Challenges that we face. What, what do you think are the major challenges that we face in terms of digital education features? The future, um, well, I, I would like to think that it starts at the most basic layer. We have to get adequate bandwidth so that people can participate, right? Yep. And I'd like to think that uh, we get it sooner rather than later so it's not a futures issue, but it certainly <laughs> is at the moment. <laughs> the digital divide is so alive and well. And and so we need to fit the 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 internet connectivity, the physical devices that it takes to participate. Um, obviously, there are huge digital literacy issues yes. um, that continue to be problems. Um, the educators who have to be given the support, not only to re-envision good teaching and learning practices, which, which is one layer. One of the things I would love about a partnership with all of you is the ability to not talk to myself in the mirror about these kinds of things the future of, of teaching and learning um, and to have a thought partner because um, in our work to help young people invent one of the layers of research was who are these awesome teachers who are doing this work with the young people what do they bring into our program when they join? What do they get from their association with the Wilmerson MIT program? What is it that we're helping them learn to do? Um, and one of the things we found out in that research is that 67% of the teachers in the year we were studying had had a career prior to teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something about the subject matter knowledge and the ways of working they bring into the education system from the private sector that are allowing them to have these incredible results with kids. And I know a lot of times educators who've been in the field, you know, straight out of college and for many years, you know, question whether they know enough about youth development principles, this and that. And, and what we see is these teachers certainly do. And in the Biogen summer program, the, the instructors with the students were Biogen employees. And we were their thought partners in conceptualizing, designing the program, delivering it day by day. And they were excellent. They did a fantastic job. So I read articles like the one about um, Google designing its own educational uh, coursework and making it available and mm -hmm. teaching it at very low cost with their own employees and being willing to waive degree requirements for anyone who passes the course. Um, that makes me think about a future of education in which we start to break down the silos of who's teaching and who's learning. Mm -hmm. And people who are subject matter experts or technical experts in their field can come alongside people who specialize in education to deliver the very best learning opportunities possible. And that's um, really what we do when we help young people develop as inventors. Part of the secret sauce of our program is that we help the teachers think about how to get the students to engage with people in their local communities who have whatever types of expertise or skill sets or insights into a problem it is that the students need to understand and to facilitate that engagement process. And then there is a, a series of, of steps we take them through, but there, it's all a dialogic process and a gaining of expertise um, from people in the community. Or if it's not in the local community, we help find that expertise and bring it in virtually. The great collaborations that I've had are conversations like this, and then opportunities do arise. And by virtue of this conversation, it's like, oh, then we can come back to it and sync, sync 
up really quickly when those opportunities do come in the door uh, and they're inevitable.